If you are considering an investment into a solar power system for your home in Florida, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video first because I'm gonna be teaching you how the solar program works in Florida in 2024, as well as going over other important details such as the brands of solar panels which work best in Florida, state rebates and tax incentives, and also which installers are best to work with. And make sure that you stick around until the end because I will be going over the typical price range that you should expect to pay for solar installed on your home in Florida in 2024 in order so that you can make sure that you're getting the best deal. To be Again, Florida is split up amongst four main power companies. You have Florida Power and Light, FPL, which services the east coast of Florida, as well as the south region, so everything between Jacksonville down to Miami, including servicing greater Naples area. We have Duke Energy, which services the greater central Florida region, including Orlando and parts of north Florida. Tampa Electrical Company, a subsidiary of Tico Energy, which services the greater Tampa Bay area. And lastly, Gulf Power Company, which services the west end of the Panhandle. There are also other electrical providers in the state, though if you trace them back, the majority of them will just be subsidiaries of one of these four companies. Now, this is important to cover, and if you currently purchase your electricity from one of these four utility companies or their subsidiaries, you should listen up closely because you may be eligible to qualify for their one-for-one -one net metering program. I know a lot of you watching this channel have already been following this and you know what net metering means, but for those of you who are new to the subject of solar energy, what net metering means is that your relationship with the power company is an equal two-way relationship, meaning that if you have solar power available and excess solar power available, not only can you use it directly to power your home, but you can also export your extra solar. In other words, you can send your solar power back to the electrical meter for full price credit. And what happens is that that electricity will flow out of your meter and the power company will sell it to one of your neighbors. And your utility company will then give you full price credit for that excess energy that you generate. And having that full credit is important because after the sun sets during the evening hours, you're gonna be pulling energy back in from the utility, assuming that you don't have your own battery storage system. So you're gonna be pulling electricity back in from the utility during those evening hours, and you can simply use those credits that you built up during the daytime hours to pay off that bill. And that's what you would want ideally. It's a full, true, one-for-one -one net metering credit. So you send them a kilowatt hour, you take a kilowatt hour from them, it all balances out even. Now, if you haven't already realized this from the amount of ads that you see online and sales companies knock on your door, Florida is currently one of the fastest growing residential solar markets in the country. And while the state's favorable weather and relatively low installation costs contribute to this trend, the primary reason residential solar is becoming so popular in Florida is thanks to its excellent net metering policy. In 2008, Florida's current net metering rules were enacted by the Florida Public Service Commission, and they applied to all four of the large for-profit utility companies. And what they laid out is that customers would receive a full retail rate for excess generation, so that one-for-one one credit that we talked about earlier. Additionally, those credits would roll over month to month at that full retail rate, meaning that in months such as the early spring or the late fall, when your electrical usage is lower due to nicer weather, you can begin to accumulate credits for months in the midsummer where your electrical usage may exceed what the solar system is producing. This is excellent and this is really what we want. Now, at the end of the 12 month period, those credits would be paid out to you, though with the utility's avoided cost rate, meaning the utility company will only pay you out the price the utility would pay for wholesale electricity, so likely less than half the price per kilowatt hour that you pay. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to try to drastically oversize the system and try to make money with solar panels. But what we are able to do is size the system at 100% offset, meaning a system that produces the same amount of kilowatt hour over a year period that the house uses historically without needing to buy batteries. You will still, however, regardless of whether or not you have solar, be required to pay a connection fee for just being connected to the grid, which can typically vary between $10 and $25 a month. Because of this net metering program and the relatively low cost to install solar in the state of Florida, the typical return on investment for a grid-tied solar-only system in the state is often between six and 10 years, and this is really gonna be the reason why you see so many companies moving here and why you probably see ads left and right. Now, having a favorable net metering program is not the case in all places. States like California and Arizona have less favorable programs that only grant homeowners 15 to 25 cents on the dollar for the energy that they send back to the grid, 
And so for that reason, over the past few years, many solar contractors have been moving to Florida as it's really become the new mecca for residential solar. Unfortunately, with that has come many bad contractors. Compared to other states, it's fairly easy to get your necessary licenses to install solar in Florida. So we've seen a lot of home roofing companies and home electrical companies transition into installing solar and also large sales companies migrate here and just subcontract out all of their installs. Because of this, many insurance companies over the past couple of years have begun to drop homeowners with these poorly installed solar systems or just increase their insurance rates drastically if they can tell that the equipment and the install quality is not up to par. But again, this is why you want to make sure that you choose the right contractor when you're installing your solar. Don't just shop around on the cheapest price and who's offering you the lowest monthly payment. You really wanna make sure that you do your homework and ask yourself if you're working with a highly reputable company who's going to do quality work. And of course, if you need some help with selecting the right contractor for your project, we would be happy to help you with that here at Solar Pros. We work with some of the best solar companies across the state. And so if you'd like to receive a solar proposal for your home in Florida, or maybe you already have a bid and you'd simply like to receive a comparison bid just to make sure that you're getting a good deal, feel free to reach out to us by booking a call using the link below this video, and we would be happy to provide you with some options for your home. Now, moving on from speaking about net metering and solar policy, I want to speak about what solar panels will work best in the state of Florida and which I recommend. If you've watched some of my previous videos where I've ranked solar panels, you may have heard me mention that the best solar panel for your home can depend on the area that you are in and the type of project that you are installing. And Florida is certainly not an exception to that rule. In Florida, there are two main things, two important ratings within the panel that I would recommend that you take into consideration when comparing options. And those two things are gonna be the durability of the solar panel and then the temperature coefficient. Starting off with the durability, I want to remind you that all solar panels are manufactured differently, and some are built to have a stronger frame and glass than others. Now, one thing that you may already know about solar panels is that they come with warranties, oftentimes a 12 to 25 year product warranty, which guarantees against manufactured defects, and a 25 to 30 year linear power warranty, which guarantees that the panel will not degrade a performance more than a given amount year over year. However, the one thing that you will not be warranted for will be damage caused to the panels from natural events, such as wind storms, property damage, hail, or even damage from a tree branch falling onto your panel. And so investing into a solar panel with a strong frame and a strong glass is the best way to mitigate against these events from happening. Aside from talking about investing into a durable panel, it's also extremely important that we invest into a panel that has a low temperature coefficient. Now, when I speak about temperature coefficient, I'm simply referring to how well a solar panel will perform in high temperature environments. Generally speaking, solar panels will operate at their highest efficiency with outside conditions of 70 seven degrees Fahrenheit. And for every degree above that, they're slightly less efficient. And in Florida specifically, temperature coefficient comes out to being one of the most important ratings when evaluating solar panel options, because while average annual temperatures in the mid afternoon in Florida throughout the year hover around 80 degrees, the average rooftop temperature can be upwards of 20 to 30 degrees higher, impacting the panel's daytime production massively. Therefore, there are a couple of panels that I think work really well in the state of Florida. Firstly, I think the Aptos DNA 440 watt is a great panel as it's one of the most durable panels on the solar market that you can buy. However, it does not have the best temperature coefficient of all of the options. So the panel that I really have found works best for the state of Florida, as it really gives you the best combination of temperature coefficient and durability is going to be the Meyer Burger solar panel. Meyer Burger is a German company. However, they just recently opened up a manufacturing facility in Arizona, making an American made and manufactured solar panel. And the new panels coming out of the States have an industry leading low temperature coefficient rating of negative 0.26, meaning the panel operates very well even at high temperatures. And they have all done this while using what is called a glass glass design, meaning that the panel not only has a glass front sheet, but also a glass back sheet. With the majority of residential solar panels, what you'll have is you'll have a glass front sheet, a large piece of glass that protects the solar cells from the elements. But under the panel, you might have a polyester 
or plastic back sheet. This can make the panel more susceptible to cracking or even damage as it's gonna be more flimsy. So by Meyerberger having the glass glass design, they offer a very durable panel to homeowners, all while being tier one in the other ratings. Moving on from panels, in regards to state rebates and tax incentives, the state of Florida does not currently offer a state tax credit to homeowners who purchase solar in the state. However, what they do have is legislation in place that allows you to take advantage of sales tax exemption, meaning you do not have to pay a 6% sales tax on the purchase of a solar system. And they will also offer a property tax exemption on the added home value from the rooftop solar system. So your property taxes will not go up due to the added appraised value of your home once you have solar. I'm really curious to know if you've already gone solar in the state of Florida, how your experience has been, and if you think I missed something worth covering. So how has your experience been? And if you think that I missed something worth covering, feel free to leave a comment below as far as what that might be, as well as any questions that you might have, uh, and I'll try to respond back to you in a timely manner. As I promised you guys at the start of the video, as far as what you should expect to pay for solar in the state of Florida, Obviously, it can depend on the quality of equipment that you're purchasing and the contractor that you work with. But from my experience in reviewing quotes of really what I'm seeing solar being sold for in the state of Florida in 2024, what you're likely looking at is a little bit under $3 price per watt. So again, solar is sold on a price per watt basis, meaning the cost depends on how many solar panels that you invest into. But let's just say for an easy example, you need a 10,000 watt system to offset 100% of your $300 a month electric bill. You might be looking at around $30,000 for a system. There are other factors to take into account, such as the brand and the quality of the panels and inverters that you choose to go with, as well as what type of roof that you have and if you're looking to install a more complex system such as a ground mount, but I hope that this gives you a general idea. One thing that I have seen recently, which is kind of a scam in Florida, is a lot of companies selling financing at 10 or 11%, uh, which is kind of crazy. We work with some regional banks here in Florida that can offer homeowners as low as 7% for same as cash price financing. So. Again, feel free to reach out to us and we would be happy to provide you with some options for your home if you're looking at going solar in the state of Florida. Now, while this video was meant to give you a general idea of the Florida Home Solar Program, there are many things that you still need to know about going solar. So make sure that you check out my video going over the top five regrets that homeowners have after going solar so that you can avoid making mistakes later down the road. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.